<clears throat> love incarnate, love divine, star and angels gave the sign. Bow to babe on bended knee, the savior of humanity. Unto us a child is born, he shall reign I invite you to rise in body or spirit for the call to worship. We gather this day after Christmas to recall what has come to pass, to rejoice that Christ has been born and to be filled with the love he offers.
Let us stay standing and will you join me in our opening prayer. We gather, we gather Lord, Lord, in gratitude for the blessings, blessings of, of Christmas, Christmas, for our hearts made glad by the, by the Holy Child. Child. We gather we to pray for peace upon the earth, earth for love and purpose of the church he built, for goodwill among all people. We come as you have led us to pray for the poor, the cold, the hungry, the oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and unloved, the old and the young, those with faith and those without. We gather to remember the message of the angels to not be afraid. We hold fast to their song and have faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, let's, let us greet one another with the peace of the Lord. And let's wave to those at home, because most everybody's watching us from home today. Peace be with you, even if you're not here in the house with us. Hello, friends. F Hello, friends, both young at heart and young in body. I still have my box. Do you remember my box? I'm not ready to give it up yet. Here it is. You thought maybe I'd given it up, but no, no, no. It's still here. There it is. How was your Christmas? Yeah? Thumbs up? Pretty good? Yes. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you the question that I think is obvious. Do you now have your own empty boxes? <laughs> I'm guessing some of you do. Quite a few of you might have your own empty boxes. And I'm guessing, wherever you are, you've done a number of things with them. The most obvious being to throw them away, or perhaps to recycle them, or maybe even to put more things in them that you just got. Well. This box, if you'll remember, helped us through Advent remind us of our spiritual blessings that we have in Advent. Joy, love, peace, hope. So I wonder what we do with our empty boxes now. Well, we could make something completely new of it, something that could encourage someone. Now, 
Listen for the word encourage. I'm going to read the scripture in just a few moments. And you'll hear the word encourage in it from a book called the Philippians from the New Testament. Listen for that. I really love the word encourage because it has the word courage right in it. And I believe sometimes it really does take courage to encourage other people. Encouraging. It can mean comforting someone to put someone else's interests and needs before your own. And also, when you encourage someone else, I'll tell you a secret. Don't tell the choir. Sometimes when you encourage someone else, you get encouragement too. But back to the box. What are we going to do with an empty box? Do you know my friend Janet Thode? She had a good idea that she thought of a few weeks ago. She thought about giving blankets to people that don't have any homes. I wonder if we could share this box with gently used or new blankets. That would be something. You know what else? I bet there are people out there who have toys that they're no longer playing with because there are newer toys. We could fill this box with gently used toys to share with maybe even refugees, people that come from another country to live in America because they just can't live in their old country. I wonder what else we could fill this empty box with. I wonder what ways we could encourage others with an empty box. Here's my challenge to you, even the choir. Let God bubble up some ideas in your mind and see what creative ways we could encourage others with what we have around us. Who knows what good God ideas might bubble up. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you <clears throat> that you believe in abundance that even when we feel like we don't have very much at all, you know there is abundance in this world you created. Help us not be afraid to encourage each other with whatever we have, even if it's an empty box. Lord, help us fill our lives with things that bless others so that you can encourage others through us and encourage us as well. Thank you, Christ, for this Christmas season. In your name, amen. A reading from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed and to bind up the brokenhearted. And a reading from Philippians. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind as Christ himself, and not to look to your own interests, but each of you to others.
It was Christmas Eve. And um, Martin was finishing his day's work. He was a cobbler, made shoes. He lived in this village his whole life, making shoes for everyone. He could look out his window. He lived in the basement. He could look out his window and from above, and he could see, he could see the shoes of the people going by, and he knew who they were by their shoes. He'd prepared almost everyone's shoes. Soldiers and bakers. And <sighs> he lived alone. He hadn't always lived alone. His wife and he had had seven children. Six died in infancy. And then his wife died. And she left him with a three-year-old son. And then just when the boy was at the age where he had been able to help him with the shop, he died. So typically on Christmas Eve, he would work late into the night. But this night he was feeling a bit lonely. He noticed someone at the door. Oh, it was, it was Ivan, 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 come in, come in. You're welcome. Ivan was an old man now. He'd been on a pilgrimage for eight years. And he was going to go back to the monastery. Sit down, sit down, warm yourself. Let me get you some tea. Thank you, said Ivan. It's cold out. So tell me, how are you? How are your journeys? Well, they're good, said Ivan. And how are you, my friend? He said, well, I'm sort of ashamed to tell you, but I've been feeling rather sorry for myself, alone here. And I ask myself, why has God left me alive? Why did God not take me? I have nothing to live for. Nothing to live for, said Ivan. Well, my friend, of course, now I understand. Why are you so depressed? It's because you're living for yourself, for your own happiness. Well, what else? What else can I live for? Who else can I live for? Well, your life was given by God. You live your life for God. What does it say in the Gospels? You have them. Yes. Yes, I do. I said, well, we'll read them again, he said. All right. Didn't he tell you about, didn't he tell you about the story of the servant, that the man that had many servants and the one that owed him money and then he, he forgave that servant and then that servant went out and and he snagged by the throat the man that owed him money. Do you remember how we are supposed to live, how we were supposed to live like the Lord to return those kindnesses? Our, our work is to live for God. I suppose you're right. And think of all these people you greet. Remember, remember the story of the woman that went to see Jesus. And he was at table with that, and that, company of all those great people, and the Pharisee had invited him in, and she came in, and she washed his feet with her hair, and she anointed his head, his feet with oil, and, and, and the Pharisee had done nothing to greet in this way, and when he criticized the woman, Jesus said, you didn't greet me with oil, and with, you didn't wash my feet with your hair, that's true. He says, we live for God, said Ivan. Yes. All right, I must be off, said Ivan. Well, well thank you. Thank you, Ivan. And he let him out the door. He looked. He looked out. There were many people still passing, but it was getting late. So he closed up the shop. And he sat down to rest. He 
closed his eyes and almost immediately he was asleep. He was so tired. Thinking about what his friend had told him. And he heard a voice. It's like a whisper in his ear. Ivan. No, it wasn't Ivan. No, but Sarah. No, no, it wasn't Sarah's voice. Uh, I'm coming to see you. What? He distinctly heard that this time. I'm coming to see you. Who's coming to see me? I'm coming to see you tomorrow. Ivan went back to sleep. Next morning, he arose, still pondering this dream that he'd had. It was clear and strange to him. He realized that the voice, it was the Lord's voice. And it's Christmas morning. The Lord's coming to see me on Christmas morning. Well, he decided to he should get ready, so he made some soup, some cabbage soup, and he prepared that, and he, um, he got everything in order, made some more tea, and then he started to work again, but looking out the windows, his basement room, you could see out the window from his workbench, looking at all the feet passing by, he recognized this pair. It was Stephen. Stephen was the worker of the tradesman next to his. He was an old soldier. He was sweeping away the snow from the steps and then from the window of Martin's room. Then he stopped, put the shovel down. I think he's tired. Stephen, Stephen, come on in here. Come here. Come on in. Stephen entered. Thank you, he said. I, my body aches, he said. Well, then sit down. Come have some tea. Come have some tea. There's plenty for you. And so he poured out a cup of tea and he filled it, and Stephen sat down. I am more weary then I realized, he said, weary in my spirit. Well then, let us have some company. And they talked of many things. But while they were talking, Martin kept looking out the window. And Stephen said, what are you looking for? He said, oh gosh, I'm embarrassed to tell you. But I had this dream last night that the Lord was coming to see me. And... So I've been looking for him, as if I would even know him. And Stephen said, Oh, I have long lost my faith. Why would he care for someone like me? And I've been said, Oh, oh no, oh, oh no, Stephen. This is exactly, we are exactly who Christ cares for. Remember, he, he called, he called people like us, working people like us to follow him. And, and he, he wanted to be with the poor and, and those who suffer. He, he chose us. Stephen looked at him with a tear in his eye. I'd forgotten, said Stephen. Thank you. You have warmed me in body and soul. and left. You're welcome. Looked out again. Now there were soldiers' boots. He didn't repair the soldiers' boots. 
Oh, but there was the baker. He reshod those shoes many times. And now another pair. There were peasants' shoes, homemade shoes. And they stopped right in the corner. Seemed to be in hide, hiding from the, the wind outside. Why was she wearing just summer clothes? This was winter time. Then he heard a crying. It's a baby crying. Oh, this is ridiculous. He says, young woman, come here. Yes, dear, come here. Come here. Come here with your baby. Come and get warm. It'll be easier to wrap up this baby from the inside where it is already warm. Come in. And she entered, surprised. Come here. Come sit. Let me, let me take this child. I have had children. And he took the child. And you, you have some tea. Thank you, sir, she said. I'm a soldier's wife. They took him away to serve eight months ago. And far away, I, I don't know where. I haven't heard from him. And we have no money. We have a good landlady that takes care of us, but I've had to sell everything I have just so that we can eat, and no one will take me for work, for my child has to come with me. Are you hungry, he said. I have, I have cabbage soup here. And he got the soup and fed it to her. Where's your shawl, he said. I sold it. This morning, he remembered his, his wife's shawl, pulled it out. It is old and rather tattered, but you are welcome. You're welcome to it. He wrapped it around her shoulders. And here, here's sixpence. Here, go retrieve your shawl from the pawn shop. The woman burst into tears. He says, surely it is the Lord himself who brought me to your window and the Lord himself that had you look out upon me. And he said, well, it, it was the Lord himself. The Lord said he would visit me today. <laughs> the woman crossed herself and said, Surely he will come, for you are a holy man. And she took her babe, and, and they left. It was getting on in the afternoon. He kept he returning to his workbench, but kept looking out the window, waiting, waiting hoping, and then came the apple woman. She walked by every day, and this was Christmas Day, and it looked to him that that basket was almost empty, but she sat down right in front of his window. And then he heard a scuffle. He saw a boy take an apple from the basket, and he'd nearly gotten away, and she grabbed him by the neck and was holding him tight, and he was screaming, I didn't do anything. And, and she was calling out, and oh, he said, oh, enough of this, enough of this. And he went out the door and said, sister, stop, stop. Let go of the boy. She said, but he stole an apple. He stole from me. I'm calling the police. He says, forgive him, sister. Forgive him. You spoil these children. We spoil them, and look what's happened to them. Sister, if we cannot forgive a child for taking an apple, then what's to become of us when we're judged? Well, she said, and she let go of the boy's neck. Now you, boy, 
Now you, you, you apologize. You ask forgiveness of grandmother here. I'm sorry. And he handed back the apple. Well, said grandmother, no harm done. She tried to hoist the bag, the basket of apples on her back, but the boy said, I'll carry those for you. Let me have it. I'm strong. They walked together away down the street. Martin returned to his bench. It was late. Too late now for guests. He thought about the story of the child for whom there was no room in the inn. He'd wanted so to let this child in, to let his family in, especially on this holy night. And he fell back in his chair and pondered. But then he heard something in the darkness. Who's there, he said. And suddenly there appeared before him Stephen. He heard a voice. It is I. And then Stephen was smiling at him. And then he vanished as if in a cloud. And then again, the voice, it is I. And this time it was this, the woman with the child. And then they vanished into the darkness. And then, then at last it was the apple seller and the boy. And he heard the sound again, it is I, and they smiled at him. And then they vanished into the darkness. And he heard the voice say, I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. I was hungry and you fed me. I had no home and you took me in. I was sad and you comforted me. He came, Martin said. The Lord was my guest.
Let us pray. Holy One, we pause in silence to take in the awesome gift of Emmanuel, to notice that you are with us. We pause to take in one good deep breath and exhale to make a little more room a manger space so that you may take up residence in us. Lord, in thanksgiving, hear our praise. Gracious God, Christmas Day has passed, but the good news and the glad tidings of this season is that Christ is born every day among us and as us and the love that fills so many hearts on Christmas Day will fill more lives today and tomorrow and the next. So as this Christmas tide continues, Lord, help us to live every day as Christmas people, people of hope, peace, joy, and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Loving God, as we say goodbye to this year, we give our thanks for the graces and blessings of it, for homes and family, for work and study, for community and connections, for health and healing, for strength and courage. Lord, in thanksgiving, hear our praise. God of comfort, we also remember in your presence our losses and griefs, those who are no longer with us, our hopes and treasures which the parting year has carried away. We pray for grace to cherish your spirit, which can bring good out of that which is painful. And we pray to be released from all that may harden or embitter our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Holy One, we pray for peace to prevail in our hearts, for the well-being of all people, and we ask for goodwill among all nations. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are poor, sick, hungry, oppressed, and those in prison. We pray for those in any need or trouble. We pray for all who seek you, God. We pray that all who seek you may find and be found by you. And in a moment of silence, we lift to you the joys and concerns we carry in our hearts. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, and together we pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power. Amen. So our closing hymn, Carol, is actually the choir singing, but we're going to get to join in with them on the refrain. And you, we won't even, aren't even going to put the words up on the screen because you know them. Go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Greg's going to cue us, so get ready.
Yeah, we're on. Um, so the choir gets to take a week off. Yay, thank you, choir, for a wonderful Advent and Christmas. And Greg's going to take a week off, too, which is also much deserved. The Van Bibbers are not taking a week off. They're going to come back with all the music that the Van Bibbers can do. We also have a, um, we also, for next Sunday, um, and we are also having um, dulcimer and ukulele and guitars and drums for a special piece. So come back for that. It'll be Epiphany Sunday. Also, we will celebrate the new year. So we welcome you back for that next week, same time, same place. Um, Nancy Nostein's here, and she would, uh, Nostein's would remind me that um, giving, end of the year giving, if you could finish out your, your year's end pledges, it would be so great before the 9th, and then Nancy can finish up 2021. I think we're all kind of ready to let 2021 go and move on into this, this great 22. I was just thinking today of how many people are going to want to get married on 2 2 22. This is just in my mind. So, uh, what an amazing, what an amazing year is ahead of us. Um, so any other announcements that we have? Kathy, anything else you can think of that we want to say? We're going to be kind of quiet around here. There'll be, there'll be work being done. Our, our team, our building management team are going to be getting some things taken care of, and Kathy and I will still be working. We'll be working mostly from home. If you need to come in here, if you need to talk to us, um, Call and we'll get those messages. Just follow the prompts on the phones. Um, so I think that's it, except to send you forth the brave souls that are here on this day and all of you watching from home into this season of Christmas tide. We're only on the second day of Christmas, friends. So we have 10 more days to the true epiphany of the Lord. And over these days, I pray that you will sense the Lord's presence, that you will realize that the Lord is, is continuously your guest in those that need you, in those that you need, in those that bring you comfort and those whom you comfort, in those who seek justice and the justice that you seek. So go in the grace and peace of the living Lord comes and lives and loves in you. Go in the grace and peace of God. Amen. <laughs>